Welcome back to the channel. So uh, today what we're going to do is we're gonna just going to do a very quick overview of the Victory at Sea rulebook. Um, this is going to be almost a must-have purchase for you if you're going to be serious about playing the game. Um, you know, if you're just going with the um, two-player starter, that's all you're going to do. There's enough rules in there to play those ships, but if you want to expand on the game at all, you're going to want to get this rule book and the rule book's great now it is a little on the thick side don't let that scare you it is not full of just rules minutiae there's all kinds of good stuff in here i'm just going to quickly go over a few of the sections here that i have marked okay so the front of the book we have all kinds of history um i mean it's not a history book but it gives you a cursory, really quick overview of some history and some of the battles that were fought in each of the theaters. So we have the Atlantic, the Mediterranean, and the Pacific theaters. Um, again, lots of very good, nice information in there. And then we have our rules um, and there's all kinds of stuff I'm going to quickly go th through this the, it, the rules are about 35 pages ish um, so just basic rules um, starts with the basic rules then the different um, phases of the game um, you've got your movement phase your gunnery phase end phase and orders traits so you see those on a lot of the ships um, things like armored deck torpedo belt um, radar the aircraft X the DP dual purpose all of those kinds of um, traits that you see on your ship cards you can get a description of those here then it goes into aircraft so I like to consider so the up to this point it's all about the shooting ships and um, if you want to play the two-player starter or just want to play um, cruisers destroyers and battleships that's going to get you as enough as much as you need then if you want to get deeper into the game you've got aircraft that you're going to want to add to, get to the game um, that'll probably be one of the first things that you'll add then there are some more um, some more, a little bit more advanced rules um, in terms of victory points, tactical withdrawals, the objectives. So once you get into this, you and your opponent are each going to have an objective to play in the game, that which is going to det determine who won or lost. It doesn't have to just be kill kill all the other guys' ships. It can be um, different objectives. Talks about deployment, um, scouting rules. Scouting rules is getting a little bit more on the advanced side. You're not going to get into that right away. That'll be a few games in for you. Um, victory to and defeat um, and things like that. Then some additional rules. So again, getting a little bit a little bit more complicated here. Then submarine rules, which I, my head still spins a little bit with the submarine rules, so I'm still trying to figure that one out. And then the MTBs or motor torpedo boats. Um, I really haven't gotten into that. So one thing I will say about motor torpedo boats is they're treated a little bit more like the aircraft. Um, you know, all the ships and things and submarines in the game have um, cards with statistics and all kinds of information. Um, Air, air flights and MTBs do not. Um, it's basically one hit and they're they're gone. Um, so all of the rules for airplanes and motor torpedo boat, boats just come from this rule book. They're not going to be in the base rule book that's in the um, two-player starter. It, you're only going to get those rules really here. I mean, there's some places online to get some stuff, but you're going to want this book to be able to reference while you're playing a game.
Okay. And then what we had then some some also some other more advanced rules about coasts and shorelines and things like that, how close you can get to a shoreline. So that's if you get into playing with terrain and things like that. So then we have scenarios. The scenarios are all kinds of they're based on actual battles during the war and it gives you how you set up your ships what you're trying to do based in this scenario there are small ones here um, now interestingly there are some ships in these scenarios that warlord has not produced yet probably will at some point in the future but they have not yet and so you would have to proxy for those or use 3d printed models things like that they do have these for all the different um, factions, I believe. Um, I'm not sure about um, the French and the Italians. I haven't gotten into it that deep, but then we have Pearl Harbor here. Pearl Harbor is an interesting one because the Japanese only play with airplane flights and the Americans have all of these ships basically in the harbor. All right, so then all kinds of stuff for scenarios. And then we get into each Navy has its own section. So I bookmarked the U.S. Navy. I have the U.S. and the Japanese navies bookmarked, mostly because those are the two navies I'm collecting to start. So it gives you um, some information and history about the U.S. Navy, some national rules. So these are specific rules that if you're going to play with the US Navy that you have to abide by these specific rules sometimes it's a benefit to you sometimes it's a detriment to you um, like the torpedoes are a little bit of a detriment but the VT fuses are a positive for you um, so you have to pay attention to that and then gets into all the information so this is all the information that are on the ship cards like the Iowa class so that's the Missouri we have that one so this is basically everything that's on the card and again there are ships in here that are all pointed out have all the information for the weapons all of the refits but aren't in the game yet so they may or may not be at some point in the future we'll just have to wait and see but even if they're not you would be able to proxy something if you wanted to play a specific ship that hasn't been produced in the game yet the, the U.S. has a very long section here. Then we have aircraft carriers, and again, the U.S. has more aircraft carriers than just about anybody. Now, the Japanese had quite a few. Um, then cruisers. Then we get into destroyers, and then um, more destroyers. This huge page of this destroyer here. And towards the end of each one, we get into the aircraft. So we also have submarines. So we, are, we get into the aircraft, and so it gives you all the statistics for each um, type of aircraft, um, when, what years they're available to be used in, whether they can be used on a carrier or not, um, whether they're a fighter or a bomber, torpedo bomber. Um, all of that, their flank speed, dogfighting um, value, their damage dice, traits, and points. So you're going to need this if you're going to use flights. Uh, motor torpedo boats, same thing. Um, the U.S. doesn't have a lot of motor torpedo boats for the World War II. We were these are usually used close to shore, and we were a long way from home for most of the war, so they don't have a lot of mortar torpedo boats. Um, but I mean, they only have two types. Some of the uh, some of the navies have more than two. But then Marine Nationale. This so that's basically the French, and then I have bookmarked my Japanese. I won't go th through everything on here because it's basically the same as the U.S. All the different ships. And then finally, 
I had mentioned this in a previous video, but we do have all of our tokens here on a page and it does give permission to photocopy it for personal use only. So if you are going to play um, Victory at Sea, you're going to want the rulebook, but if you're not going to, if you don't want to play the US Navy or the Japanese Navy and you'd like to play the Kriegsmarine or you'd like to play uh, the Royal Navy, then get this, photocopy the page, use some, cut, cut out the tokens, use some card stock, make all of your own tokens. You don't need to get the two-player starter to get all of these tokens. They're all right here in the book for you. But that's very, that that's pretty much it. Um, the book is very nice. It is a little bit on the expensive side, but it's um, a great asset to have for the game. Um, I definitely recommend picking one up. Um, and I will, in future videos, once I get to playing more, I'm focused on painting right now, but once I get to playing some more, um, we will go through specific sections in more detail in the book and hopefully learn the game together without making too many mistakes. Mistakes will be made, but we'll s fix those as they come about. But thank you very much. Um, have fun. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.